It's now my great pleasure to introduce to you Russell Prue. Russell was our keynote speaker a couple of years ago at a, an arts conference that we ran at, at the pavilions. Um, and, and Russell is part of it, runs Anderton Tiger, has his own radio uh, station, which he'll, he'll tell you more about, I'm sure. Um, but I'm absolutely delighted that Russell can be with us once again. He's passionate about the arts, passionate about education, passionate about creativity. And I know you'll have fun this afternoon as well. So can we give a big warm welcome to Russell Prue. Don't stop, don't stop. Thank you, you're too kind. And what I do does not fit easily into any pigeonhole, and I like that. My journey through life has been hell. But it's been very interesting. I spend most of my time convincing educators to be more creative in their teaching practice. I spend some of my time convincing uh, policy makers to put more arts back into the curriculum and to engage young people on an entirely different level. For me, things have changed significantly. Let's start using some technology because that's what I do. If you send me a text number, you don't have to. If you do send me a text number with the word Russell in it, I'll return a free text message to your mobile phone. The data isn't shared with anyone and your information is safe with me. Uh, if you'd like to try it, we should do so much more of this. It seems ridiculous that every young person in this country is packing more computing power in their school bags than we can afford to buy for them at school. Fact, let's get over it and work out how we include that kind of technology in our learning spaces. For goodness sake. Uh, I, when, uh, for educators, when did a young person rush up to you and ask you how to operate their mobile device? Oh, excuse me, sir, I've just forgotten how to text. Can you just show me how to text on my phone? When did a young person rush up to a teacher and say, can I borrow your charger, sir, miss? I've forgotten to charge my device. When did that ever happen? Time to wake up and smell the coffee, ladies and gentlemen. The world has changed, and there's no sign of it turning back. Use it or don't use it, you can find the handouts at the website at the bottom of the page there, andertontiger.com, that's my consultancy business, uh, available for weddings, funerals, and bar mitzvahs. Uh, andertontiger.com forward slash Russell if you want to find out the content there and look me up. Twitter is an incredibly <coughs> liberating device. It has the capacity to turn things upside down. It has the capacity to overturn governments. It has the capacity to engender change. That's why the NSA are watching you so carefully, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And it is by no accident that the BlackBerry messaging was the very last technology for um, our GCHQ lovies to get control of. So if you remember a couple of years ago, if you had a BlackBerry, it went off for three days. Do you remember that? Absolutely no BlackBerry for three days. That was so uh, our overlords could plumb in the monitoring technology. Because if you remember, the riots we had a few years ago were all organized on Blackberries because you could message from one Blackberry to another without anyone knowing. No central computers were involved in that. Most of the people in, on this planet who are connected to the internet are on Facebook. Get over it. Get in there and get that bit on the right hand side. The bit Russell Prue is given to you, and it'll be your name, or your business, or your school name, or your institution, or your university. It's yours on a first come, first served basis. I love the arts for the reason that some of you have just started to laugh. Look at the photograph carefully. I love the way that you can invoke an emotional response. I love the way you can poke fun at Tesco's. Not that I have any problem with Tesco's, except for the amount of food they throw away every week. But that's another issue for another presentation, ladies and gentlemen. I just love stuff like that that has great capacity for discussion. And that's really where I want us to go on this journey, because I think that's really quite important now. I just have to say, I had to share that with you. Do you love it? Do you love it? Lovely photograph. Take it, use it, show it with people. I love it. It goes with lots of captions as well. Um, so what's the problem? What's coming our way? This is 
our next competitor. She's already in the system. This is an under one year old who's now touching a magazine for the first time. She's been exposed to an iPad before the magazine. So she's trying to pinch and resize the images on the printed magazine. <laughs> Some of us find this amusing. And it is, really. Uh, it's also quite disturbing at the same time. Because it actually means that this young lady, under one years of age, has had a greater level of exposure to digital media than printed media. She's going to ask where the creative space is. Where do I share? Where do I collaborate? And if our educational system doesn't change, the educator in charge will have to say, stop. We don't collaborate. That's cheating. We don't share because we can't assess you as an individual if you share. There are some big challenges ahead for policymakers, and not least for this problem. The world is changing all the time. I've got no idea what it's going to be like in even five years' time. You know all those new changes, Facebook, new technology, and what I'll be doing. See, some people aren't so sure that my current education is actually preparing me for a better future. They're questioning whether my education is actually preparing me for the rest of my life. Check out the videos and see what you think. This is Sir Ken Robinson, brilliant. I like to check my compass with him once a year. Try and catch him live if you can. I've included the whole of this video, but I'm just going to pluck this one out. From a famous book called Breakpoint and Beyond. Well, I'll let Ken tell you what he did. How many uses can you think of for a paperclip? Well, those routine questions. Most people might come with 10 or 15. People who are good at this might come with 200. And they do that by saying, well, could the paperclip be 200 foot tall and be made out of foam rubber? You know, like, does it have to be a paperclip as we know it, Jim? You know. Um, now, they tested this and they gave them to 1,500 people in a book called Breakpoint and Beyond. And on the protocol of the test, if you scored above a certain level, you'd be considered to be a genius at divergent thinking. Okay? So, my question to you is, what percentage of the people tested, of the 1,500, scored at genius level for divergent thinking. Now you need to know one more thing about them. These were kindergarten children. So what do you think? What percentage at genius level? 80. 80. 80, okay. 98%. Now, the thing about this was it was a longitudinal study. So they retested the same children five years later. Age of eight to 10, what do you think? 50. They retested them again five years later, ages uh, 13 to 15. You can see a trend here, can't you? <laughs> now, this tells an interesting story. Because you could have imagined it going the other way. Couldn't you? You start off not being very good, but you get better as you get older. But this shows two things. One is, we all have this capacity. And two, it mostly deteriorates. Now, a lot of things have happened to these kids as they've grown up. A lot. But one of the most important things that happened to I'm convinced is that by now, they've become educated. They, you know, they've spent 10 years at school being told there's one answer, it's at the back. And don't look. And don't copy, because that's cheating. I mean, outside schools, that's called collaboration. You know, but inside schools. And this isn't because teachers want it this way, it's just because it happens that way. Um, it's because it's in the gene pool of education. We have to think definitely about human capacity. We have to get over this old conception of academic, non-academic, abstract, theoretical, vocational, uh, and see it for what it is, um, a myth. Another good friend of mine is Sugata Mitra. He's the guy who did the research that gave a slumdog millionaire. 25 years of research into learning and teaching. And he's boiled all of that research down to one sentence. This is great research, just amazing. Let me give you that one sentence. The world, and notice that children will learn to do what they want to learn to do. That's it, I love it, it's just great, isn't it? Knowing that, <coughs> we should do more as educators to make you want to do more, particularly with the creative arts, just essential. This one came across my desk a little while ago, just absolutely lovely. Um, even the technologists 
um, are getting into the creative arts as well. I just love this. So there's a nice bit of overlap here as well. So we're doing stuff like this in this country with Raspberry Pis, the little computer interface. This is using the conductivity of different materials. This is Play-Doh. And turning it into a game console. And even pencil, when drawn on paper, is conductive. But my journey through radio has happened almost by <coughs> accident. Trying to find a way of exciting young people and helping them to develop their language skills. It doesn't matter how creative you are, if you're unable to communicate that creativity and your opportunities of work and further development, then there's not much point, really. And communication skills, I think, are more important than we're currently paying them uh, to be. And so I came up with this idea, and this is my invention. I have a factory, actually, in Selby, uh, which manufactures school radio systems. And I chose to do it in Selby. Actually, it's just cheaper to manufacture a bit further north from where I live, which is down uh, in Oxford. You can tell that I'm not from around here, can't you, with the, uh, the rough accent that I have. So, um, and this has been really, really useful because I've got some great evidence, which is part of my journey for uh, uh, my PhD I'm on uh, at the moment, very close to uh, my final thesis on that. Uh, over eight years, I've collected a huge range of evidence, really interesting information about how people respond to a challenge in a creative setting. It's always good to look around the world and see what's going on elsewhere. This is from a 17-year-old boy in Australia. And I've chosen his example because he's been very successful with his music composition. For the last 10 years, Australia have adopted a creative educational curriculum. They teach maths with a creative uh, influence. They te teach all of our subjects, but with much more emphasis on pupil-led learning and more creative problem solving. And the output, I guess, is this. This is amazing. He's now got a job with Disney Pixar. And what he did was he recut some content from the Up movie, that animation, and he's composed the entire music track. And Disney have actually paid him and used the music track in the promotion of the DVD. It's good. It's good. <laughs> People are doing it for themselves. This is another big craze, which is the sweeping the world with some great interest. This is a fan-made movie trailer. The fan has watched the film and has recut their own trailer for it. And the first example I have here for you is that Disney have paid this chap to use his fan-made trailer for the DVD release. So they dumped their trailer and went with his. Yeah? Well, when you learn that he's 15 years old and actually shouldn't have watched the film in the first place, but that, that is an entirely different, an entirely different. This is John Carter, just amazing. Beautiful. Done in his bedroom on an Apple laptop. Nothing special. Stand the technology. This is kind of true. I can possibly find some kind of explanation in here. Follow the link. It's really, really good. If you Google fan-made movie trailer and John Carter, you'll come up with the both trailers. And you can actually compare and contrast them both together. And it really is good. People paid a fortune to cut the Disney trailer. This guy's 15 years old and his is a hundred times better. You have to ask yourself some very interesting questions. Anyway, I don't see that. It's a good, it's a good movie, actually. It's very good. 
Um, also, also uh, whilst you're looking around, go and find out what other people do. Don't copy everyone, because everyone takes a different path. But I, I like this. I put this together for uh, another presentation. This is a Norwegian uh, video. And I'll just sort of share it with you. It's just sort of um, just brilliant. I have a talk in there, but the technical side in there. I'm not going to be able to be fine with me. Yes, I have a Discussion. I've had educators now rushing up saying, outrageous, outrageous. Uh, where did they get the welding kit from? And I go, that's what you took from the, from the video? Shouldn't encourage them, they'll be, they'll be doing this all the time. Uh, they'll be doing this to HS2 before you know that. Really? Excellent. I just love it. I absolutely love it. There's great opportunities. I've, I've painted, I hope, a realistic picture. There's great opportunities for you. Um, I want you to embrace technology, challenge learning, challenge your educator, ask difficult questions. It's your right. Go and find out about stuff. Go and look creatively. If you've got a creative mind, you've got the type of investigative mind that we society desperately need you to have. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to take a closer look at the arts.